But I think the first thing I wanted to talk to you about, I, I finished reading the Observer uh, story on Bullet Bob Armstrong, and it was really good. I, I really learned a lot about him. He obviously is from a little bit before my time of watching wrestling, but um, really, really great piece on him. And I think a lot of us sort of knew that that this day was coming sooner than later. And I know that family has had a lot of a lot of that happen recently with with the mom uh, as well. Um, but yeah, just um, you know, any thoughts uh, on, on the piece that you wrote? God, what a rib! I, I mean, it's, it's like the first thing. I mean, it's like I hate I hate to say this. But, um, you know, Brian on Wednesday night, I was going like, you know, I got this issue. You know, I never have like the thing where, oh, tomorrow's going to be cake. I, all, you know what I mean? It's like it's always hard. And it's like I had everything done. You know, all I had to do was watch AEW and, you know, write about, you know, a few news notes here and there. I mean, it's pretty much done. I mean, and I was already over 18 pages anyway. So it was like or I write at 18 pages. So it's like all I got to do is review Dynamite and finish it's gonna be the easiest thursday in months and all day it's just a normal day everything's cool and AEW's over and it's like okay one more hour of writing and a little bit of you know editing and uh it's gonna be the earliest i've been done in a long time and not tired and nothing and about you know a half hour later i see on twitter you know it was um uh you know that bob armstrong died and it's kind of like okay um I, no one's no one's going to expect me to do a story at this late time, so I'm just going to do a page. I can do a page pretty quick, um, and then it's just kind of like I started writing, and it's just like well, I can't leave this out, and I can't leave this out, and it's just like I just got to do it, you know. And then it's just, it was just like I just got to suck it up, and I'm going to be up till three in the morning, and that's all it's going to be. So it was really weird and and all that, but I mean, as far as um, you know, I mean, I Bob Armstrong. I, I would have started seeing Bob Armstrong in 74 when I was in Florida for the summer and he was the North American champion. So I saw him wrestle, you know, a couple times a week when I was like 14 years old um, on a regular basis and um, really got to, you know, kind of see him in his prime. And um, then I, um, you know, then obviously with Georgia Championship Wrestling when it got on cable, and then when I would get tapes from Alabama and stuff, I saw him a lot when he was probably a little bit past his prime, but obviously the uh, the Roddy Piper thing, which is probably the thing that I know my friends of my age, whenever they thought of Bob Armstrong, was always the Roddy Piper angle on Georgia Championship Wrestling because it was so well done and so memorable, and it was like a slow build, and you wanted that match, like, so, you know, like for... for two or three months before it ever happened. And then it finally happened and the match was huge, but then they kind of like dropped it. It was, it was, you know, which had to do with the finish. I think, you know, um, you know, um, I remember, you know, Barnett and I, Barnett and I had many conversations about the Bob Armstrong, Roddy Piper thing, because it was, you know, Roddy's first big match at the Omni, his first match at the Omni period. And, you know, he thought Roddy could be this great draw for him, but Roddy needed to beat Bob. And then Ole, you know, booked it to where it was a double count out. And then it just kind of, you know, Roddy never really drew big in Atlanta. He drew big in other places, but but not there. And, um, you know, um, but but then, you know, obviously Bob and Smoky Mountain, Bob Armstrong. I mean, the one thing I, that that I, when I was writing the piece that really hit me was Bob Armstrong is the commissioner of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. There has never been anyone so perfect for a role in that time and that place. He was the perfect guy. And, and he'd be, you know, because he could talk, which was always his big thing, is he could talk, but he had that thing where everybody liked him. I mean, he did, he, he did very well on his few heel runs. He could do it because he was a great performer who understood, you know, how to talk, uh, no matter what the situation was and a great, you know, great talker and, uh, you know, a great performer in his own way. Um, not a, not like what I would call a great um, guy who would give you classic matches or anything like that. I mean, but but, you know, like, again, when I was a kid, the thing that everybody saw in the 80s that were around in the 80s with Magnum T.A. Remember when I watched Magnum T.A., it's like that's Dusty was getting over really big at the time in Florida. Bill Watts was the booker. And the whole thing is Bob Armstrong came in and beat everybody in under five minutes, which, you know, Dusty made it with Magnum, you know, under one minute or whatever it was. But it was essentially the exact same thing, you know. And so it was like 
Yeah, Magnum was the original Magnum TA in Florida, and um, or Bob, Bob, you know, Bob was, and um, you know, and then he became just because he'd been there for so long. So when Brad comes in, you know, it's kind of like we we you know he's been around for long enough to where you know you know twenty year old twenty one year old son. Bob's going to have a 20, 20 year old son and he is older, but it added to it. Cause it's like, yeah, he's the dad and he's the badass dad. And he was a very relatable character um, that people thought they knew and they could empathize with. And um, the way he did his promos and um, you know, it's funny because he said he got, you know, you go, where, where do you get the promos from? And he said like, he just listened to things that people said, you know, when they were, shit talking each other when he was like a kid and he just remembered it all and then it, it would come out in his promos you know all those sayings and everything um but yeah i mean the, the you know bob was a, a a great great baby face promo and a a great character and and the other thing of later is how much respect bob had with the younger wrestlers and and bob was a guy i remember this and it's sort of in the article but you know i know mike Tanay for Oh my God! You know, um, over you know a long, long time. Okay, let's say that. And I remember when you know he'd mentioned to me that Bob, you know, came up to him once and and compared him to Gordon Soley. And I could just tell with it's like, of all the, I mean, because Mike's not a guy. Who, oh, this guy said this about me. He's not that guy, right? But but um, I knew that that meant a lot to him because he respected Bob and and he respected Gordon Soley too. And, you know, if you're an announcer and you're compared to Gordon Soley by a guy who, when he says it, you trust him enough to go, oh, he's just not some guy kissing my ass because I'm so I will commentate on his match better. You believe it. And he's a guy who worked with Gordon Soley, you know, for, you know, a decade plus, you know, it's just like that, you know, that's kind of like where the, the, the respect he had. I remember like Tracy Smothers and all of those type of wrestlers that were in Smoky Mountain Wrestling where we would give tips to that I would talk to and Bob was like almost like um I don't want to say like a second father but like he was a absolutely a mentor that they respected you know he would give in Smoky Mountain Wrestling and and I'm sure in, and in TNA as well he would give the younger guys advice on how to work and he did it in a way where you know they felt good and and um he he's just a you know um I mean, more more than just his wrestling itself, his experience and his way, um, and people really, um, they just really, he was a very likable guy, and he came across that way in wrestling. That's why he was, again, 90% of his career plus, he was a babyface. And then when he was a heel, he was an effective heel in Alabama because he was such a big babyface that the people really, like, they felt a real betrayal of him turning on the fans because he was the one guy who you thought, you know, wouldn't. And it wasn't a Bruno thing where like if Bruno had turned heel, it would have killed business. Um, it, when Bill Goldberg turned heel, it, it was stupid. When Austin turned heel, it was terrible, not terrible, but it killed business. You know, it's like Bob could go heel because he wasn't the baby face that, that everyone, it's not like everybody watched wrestling to see Bob. Bob was a guy. If you were a wrestling fan, and you watched it. Bob was a guy that you liked, but he was not the guy. He was never the guy who swelled business, you know, top, top um, guy. Yeah, in Alabama to a degree, but in Georgia, he was, you know, number three baby face, number four baby face, but a very likable number three, number four baby face. And one that you could relate to in that he was the working man. You know, Dusty Rhodes was larger than life. Tommy Rich was this pretty boy wrestling too with something else. Bob was... The guy from the fighting fireman from Marietta, Georgia, you know, 20 miles from Atlanta, who, you know, had his wife and his kids. and He was a good guy. And he was, you know, he was your neighbor and blah, blah, blah. And he, you envisioned you kind of envisioned that Bob was a guy who would never be a bully, even though he was a tough guy. And but if if somebody was bullying somebody else, you would think Bob would be the guy who would you know, not take it. You know, you had that kind of feel for this being a real guy. And, and that was the character. That's why he was a. He was so successful um, in the roles he had. And, and then later when he got older, he could he had a role in the business because it was like you grew up with him and you 
liked him and you believed what he said. And when he was commissioner, you believed he would be a fair commissioner. He was always portrayed as a fair commissioner, whether it was um, Smoky Mountain and later in TNA. And he stood up and, and, you know, he would do his every now and then when he had to go in the ring, you know, even though he was older, you kind of thought, you know, he's, he's a badass guy because he, you know, and he always looked the part too. I mean, he was an avid, avid weightlifter, um, you know, big chest, big, real big arms. And, um, you know, um, just that, that kind of a, you know, the man's man thing, you know, it was, he, he had a real, uh, thing to him and, um, yeah, it was, um, we knew it was coming. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a secret. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter that you knew it's coming. It's, it's a sad day. He was, a he was, uh, really great guy for his role i've never saw him in a role he didn't play well he was not like when when he would when when um wcw went national you know bob was sometimes around and bob at that point in his life you know could not be the top guy he was older and and they were going to go with younger guys but bob was you know bob knew how to put guys over he knew how to make guys and um you know and, and all those armstrongs you know every one of them could wrestle you know i mean you can never take that away they were never i think in in as being a top guy you know i mean like you know brian road dog was a bigger national star because of you know he was on a on a more of a national stage but um but bob was more of a top guy to me than brian and and brad who was the best worker of the family um you know brad just missed something it, it was on you know when it when it you know, he, he was a great guy. Everybody liked him. Everybody thought he was funny. But on the cam, on camera, somehow he was lacking that one charisma element that m took him from being a star to a superstar. And Scott, you know, was a reliable, reliable, good worker who's still working, you know, still in the business now with WWE. So, yeah, I, I would suggest uh, everyone should read that article is really good. And, you know, the, I, I commend you for being able to put that kind of thing together in, you know, in a few hours because... That was uh, that was I, I would have thought that that took you two days of work, to, you know, to, to put together just a, a quick question on how you do this. So because uh, there's lots of um, dates and there's lots of things that you remember. Are you pulling that from other stories or is that sort of in your memory and you kind of know where to find that information? I know where I don't know the dates necessarily off the top of my head, but I knew the uh, around dates. So there's always things to look up like I could tell you the you know. I could tell you roughly the year and the month of all of those dates I had, but I couldn't necessarily tell you the date. But when you know that, it's pretty easy to look up the date. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I can look, okay, Atlanta, February. I know it was early in the year, February, I think. So what day in February? So I had to, I would have to look up the date. But, I, you know, yeah, I mean, I knew, you know, the stuff in, um, in Florida. You know, I was there then. I know roughly what time. I mean, the one thing with Florida, you know, you know, I mean, he had all those five minute matches with Buddy Colton, and everything that were, you know, quick and dynamic and went over and and all that. But the matches that were really good was was him and Don Morocco against the Hollywood Blondes. I saw them in Miami Beach and I think I saw them in maybe Fort Lauderdale as well. Those guys freaking tear down the house. I mean, and um, you know, Bob was a great hot tag guy. Don Morocco in that day as a babyface was a super worker and freaking Buddy Roberts. I mean, I think, you know, people who remember Buddy Roberts with the Freebirds and everything when he was older and, you know, we know he's a good worker, but Buddy Roberts in the 1970s, you know, and Jerry Brown was good too, but Buddy Roberts was just one of those guys that never got the credit but man, those guys were incredible. And Humperdinck was a good manager too. But those, th that would be like the kind of match, like, uh, you know, th those matches. And, 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 and Florida was so loaded with talent in 74. I think that was the, I think that was the best year Florida ever had. Um, I mean, I, I mean, again, maybe I'm, I'm biased because I was there um, and people will go, oh no, it was better in 71 or whatever, you know, which I didn't see as much of. But the talent that on those shows, when I would go to Miami Beach and West Palm and stuff, it was like every match was loaded with great workers, you know, with the, the Briscoes and Bill Watts, who wasn't necessarily a great worker, but he was a great talker. And, um, you know, Ron Fuller and Robert, Fuller, you know, just up and down. And Bob was, you know, one of them. Bob was like Dusty was the king. And then, um, you know, really, I, I I sensed that Morocco and Armstrong would be like the next baby faces. And Morocco was the better of the two, 
Bob got the bigger singles push because he was getting the quick wins. Um, and Morocco didn't need to get the quick wins because he was such a great worker. But those guys, like, as a tag team, um, man, those were dynamic matches. That's the stuff I remember as, as um, you know, and Bob's already 34 at this point. Um, you know, he's not a young, young guy. And then when he's with Roddy, this he's... Um, with Roddy, he's, I guess, 40, 42, 42 years old with Roddy, which, you know, so people kind of knew, you know, hey, you know, he'd been around and he'd been around in, in Georgia since 66. And so that's uh, 16 years. So it's kind of, and he wasn't a young guy when he started because it was like, you know, he, every, you know, the stories, he was in the Marines and he was a fireman for several years before he ever wrestled. So you knew he didn't start when he was 21. You knew, you kind of knew he was right around, you know, when you first started seeing him, he was a 30 ish year old guy who was a badass. So now it's 16 years later. So, you know, um, and he's got a son and that worked. I mean, because, um, you know, the, the, the key to it was, you know, Roddy would insult him as a father and then Roddy, you know, and, and Bob would come do his comeback and everything. But when Roddy would insult Brad, you know, you're insulting the guy's son, you, you know, it's like, then you knew Bob's going to fire up on him and everything like that. So, um, yeah, very. Um, it was. It was um, if you were a fan of of wrestling um, in in eighty one, eighty two, and watched Georgia wrestling every week, as I, as I did, that was one of the most memorable angles of that period. You know, I mean, a lot of uh, you know the people who saw that. I mean, I'll, I like I said, like I as soon as you know, I started writing. It's just like I have to write the Roddy Piper story because. Most, a lot of younger people never saw it. It's 38 years ago. But that angle was great. And then I, you know, besides writing, I had to go through freaking... The wonderful thing about YouTube is I, I I don't know that I saw every Roddy Piper, Bob Armstrong stuff because I didn't. But I saw three or four of those promos and I saw the angle. And so it brought it all back to me, you know, my memories of it. So it was like, you know, it's like it was fun. It was in, in its own weird way. I mean, it's a sad day, but it brought back fun memories at the same time. And it was like, you know, when, once once you kind of acknowledge it's like, fuck it, I'm going to be up till three in the morning. <laughs> it's not that hard. It was that that thing of of that thing of like, ah, I'm, I'm going to just finish this thing up at nine tonight and I'm going to this is like an easy day. And it's like, well, you know, life changes, you know, on the spot. But, um, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 you know, Bob was a great, great character in this business and a great person. Yeah, and and you're not, you're not any, you're not someone who drinks caffeine either. So this is just you really writing because the story needed to be written, and so that's what drove you. I didn't want to wait a week on it. Once I started on it, um, it was just like, I mean, I could have, but then, you know, things things happen every week. Especially it's it's different now. Like if it was five years ago. I could have easily just written a little bit and go, I'll go back next week. But now there's, there's so much stuff and people move on. It almost becomes like an old story a week later, you mm -hmm. know, whereas before, um, you know, something like a, something like this would not be an old story in, in 2002. This would not be an old story. And I could go back to it in two or three weeks and, and be no problem. Now people would go, we've already heard, you know, a million people talk about this and we're, you know, not that they wouldn't like it or anything like that, but it's just, it's just different.